As you probably know, I made the almost daily dividend portfolio and that pays out dividends, well, almost daily. However, that's not at all normal in the world of dividends. If you invest in a single company, it will not pay you out almost daily. In this video, we'll look at how often dividends are paid out and how we can figure it out for any company. Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that helps you build a portfolio that pays your bills. The content that will be discussed is intended for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice or investment recommendation. We'll take a look at different types of payment frequency schedules, starting from least frequent to most frequent, and finally we'll look at how it all works within the almost daily dividend pie. Dividend payment frequencies. Different companies have different schedules and it really depends on what they're trying to achieve and what might work best for you as an investor. If you're looking into dividend paying stocks, it's good to know how often companies actually pay those dividends. Let's break it down. Annual dividends. Annual dividends are pretty straightforward. You get paid just once a year. This approach is more common in certain regions like Europe and Asia, and companies that go this route usually prefer to keep a larger chunk of their earnings on hand throughout the year, giving them more flexibility in managing their finances. So why might a company choose to pay dividends annually? It all comes down to giving themselves time to review their entire year's performance before making a payout. If a company operates in an industry with significant earnings swings, maybe due to seasonality or economic cycles, this method can be a smart way to handle dividends. By waiting until the end of the year, they can get a clearer picture of their overall financial health and decide on a more informed and sustainable dividend amount. For investors, this means you get one big dividend check each year. It can be a nice bonus to look forward to, especially if you've had a good year with your investments. It also aligns well with annual financial reviews, so you're essentially getting a payout based on the company's full year performance, which can be reassuring. Let's take uh, Volkswagen or Nestlé as examples, and these European listed giants typically pay dividends once a year, after they've had a chance to assess their yearly financials. This method also allows them to distribute a dividend that reflects their overall performance, which can be a good sign of their stability and confidence in their financial position. So if you don't mind waiting for that annual payout and prefer to see a larger chunk of dividend income at once, Annual dividends might be right up your alley, but to be honest, these won't feature as much in dividend investors' portfolios as they just aren't frequent enough to supply regular income. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to dividends and investing in general and wondering where to actually buy these types of stocks mentioned here, then in my opinion, the best investment platform to do exactly that right now is Trading212. I asked Trading212 if they could give me a unique code that you guys can simply type into the promo code section, capital at risk. So if you've opened a new account recently or planning to open an account, then here it is, DivXP or D-I-V-E-X-P, short for the dividend experiment. So you have 10 days from opening your account to type this in and receive shares worth up to £100. I also get something as this is my custom code, so this helps you support the channel too. If you do use it, thank you for your support and thanks to Trading212 for sponsoring this video. Semi-annual dividends. So semi-annual dividends are a bit less common than quarterly or monthly payouts, and usually found in the UK. With this setup, you're getting paid twice a year, every six months or so. It's kind of a middle ground if you're not into the idea of monthly or quarterly payouts. Why might a company choose to pay semi-annually? Well, it's all about flexibility. Some businesses, especially those in industries with seasonal fluctuations or varying earnings, find the schedule works better for them. They can hang on to their earnings a bit longer and then distribute them after they've had their peak earning periods. For instance, a company that has a big sales during the holiday season might wait until after the holiday rush to pay out dividends, or equally in the summer. Ensuring they're rewarding shareholders from their most profitable times. This approach often reflects a more conservative and stable financial management style, and it's a way for companies to manage their cash flow more efficiently, keeping a buffer in place before distributing dividends. It's also a bit easy on the company's resources as they're not handling payments as frequently. Take Barclays, for example. This company goes the semi-annual route. They're known for their stability and conservative financial practices. Paying dividends twice a year fits with their overall strategy and gives investors a nice predictable payout schedule without overwhelming the company with frequent payments. It's fairly common for companies in the UK to be semi-annual payers with an interim dividend and a typically higher final dividend. So if you're looking for a slightly less frequent but still regular income stream, semi-annual dividends could be a good fit. It's a nice blend of stability and flexibility both for the company and for your investment returns. Quarterly dividends. So quarterly dividends are the standard issue when it comes to dividend payouts in the US. Most companies go with this approach because it strikes a nice balance, four times a year, right at the end of each financial quarter. 
It's not too frequent and not too sparse. You're looking at getting paid every three months, which keeps things regular but not overwhelming. Now, why does this method work so well? For one, it gives you a predictable income without being too much of a burden on the company. Companies can use the time between payouts to reinvest their earnings into the business, whether that's for expanding operations, developing new products, or just generally growing the company. This setup is also convenient because it aligns with their financial reporting. They're reviewing their performance every quarter, so it makes sense to pay out dividends based on their most recent financials. They can make smarter decisions about how much to distribute to shareholders, ensuring they're not overextending themselves, but still providing a nice return. When it comes to big names doing this, Apple and Microsoft are prime examples. Both of these tech giants have a long history of paying dividends quarterly. They've built up a reputation for being reliable, and that regular payout is a big part of why they're considered solid long-term investments. It's like having a dependable friend who checks in every three months with a little gift. Consistent and reliable. Let's take Apple as an example. So if you're looking for a steady income but don't mind waiting a bit between paydays, quarterly dividends could be a great choice. It's a smart way for companies to reward their shareholders while still keeping their business on track for growth. And for you, it's a nice predictable stream of income to look forward to every few months. Monthly dividends. Instead of waiting three months for that payout like you would with most stocks, you get a more regular paycheck with monthly paying companies. It's like your investments are working a regular 9 to 5 job and you're the one collecting the paycheck every month. Now, why is this so useful? Well, let's say you're someone who likes to have a consistent flow of money coming in. Maybe you're just using those dividends to cover some of your living expenses, or maybe you just like seeing your investment account balance tick up more frequently. Either way, having a steady income can give you a sense of financial stability. It's like knowing you've got a paycheck coming in and you can plan around it. Plus, if you're into reinvesting the dividends, doing it monthly can really speed up your wealth building game. The more often you reinvest, the faster those little bits of money start compounding. One of the big names that comes to mind when we talk about monthly dividends is Realty Income. They've even branded themselves as the monthly dividend company. It's like their thing. They're committed to sending out that check every single month. So whether you're thinking about living off your investments down the road or just love the idea of seeing your returns come in regularly, monthly dividends can be a pretty smart play. It's all about making your money work for you and who doesn't like a little extra cash showing up each month. Now finally, the almost daily dividend pie. How does the almost daily dividend pie work then? Criteria 1. Criteria 1 was that these need to be safe, reliable companies with a decent dividend history that weren't showing any short-term warning signs. Now of course you can't predict another event like COVID-19 in the next 5-10 to 10 years, but I'm about 90-95% to 95% sure they won't cut their dividend of the ones I've selected in this portfolio. The second criteria was actually more important than the first, and it's that trading 2 on 2 must have the company in the selection of companies. I was actually pleasantly surprised that almost all the companies I researched did actually appear in the available database of trading 2 on 2 stocks and ETFs. The next thing I aimed for was to get as many stable monthly pairs as I could find as they would offer 12 payments per year, and there's a limit to how many stocks you can hold in a pie. After stable monthly payers, I wanted stable quarterly payers, and unfortunately the USA does both monthly and quarterly payers better than us here in the UK, which usually pays semi-annually and occasionally annually. And this means that the portfolio is completely weighted to US stocks. Finally, I added a few of my favourite stocks that maybe aren't quite dividend aristocrats, but still have a good few years of dividend history, and seem like they're in a safe place to keep paying out. And that could just be based on the industry they operate in, or on a case-by-case -case basis. The final total amount of payments that this portfolio should provide is 264 payments over the course of a year. That means that it really is an almost daily dividend portfolio. Hopefully we can make it grow and see how it compounds. Overall, the frequency of dividend payments really depends on what you're looking for. Monthly dividends give you steady cash flow. Quarterly dividends strike a good balance between income and growth. And semi-annual or annual dividends might suit you, but really depends on the company itself. It's all about finding what fits your needs. If you liked this video, and if you made it this far, I'm guessing you probably did, then I have some good news for you. I'm giving away my PDF guide to the 10 Dividend Investing Commandments, or the criteria that I use to pick dividend paying stocks, and I'm giving it away to you for free. All you need to do is submit your email in the link below, and it'll get delivered to your inbox straight away. Again, that's for free. But that's not the only benefit of joining the email. You also get updates on the almost daily dividend portfolio, interesting stock ideas or news, and special deals and free stuff that I can share with you. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. See you!